everyone. My name is Christina Turner, and I'm the president of the Trout Museum of Art here in Appleton, Wisconsin. And we are thrilled to introduce to you our new curator, Tiana Bowie. Hi. Hi, Tiana. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> Tiana is the assistant professor, and she is the chair section of, for printmaking at the College of Creative Studies in Detroit, Michigan. She also lives and works in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, as well as Detroit, Michigan. So Tiana, I just wanted to thank you so much for being our guest curator for this new show. Um, how are you feeling about it? <laughs> I'm actually super excited. Uh, it's definitely the uh, biggest project that I think I've done to date as far as thinking, thinking about other people. <laughs> like, and considering other artists. So I'm super excited about it and um, very, very honored to have the opportunity to do so. And so tell us a little bit about um, the premise for the show and the name of the show. You know, we, we met together uh, and I, I, I think I immediately was thinking about, well, what if we're, if we're gonna be having a show in 2021, with everything that's been going on with the pandemic, with uh, racial unrest and what has been in the air. And I think what's been in the air, what's been on everybody's mind for the most part is inclusion. And what does that actually look like for institutions, for people, for everyone? And so for me, I was like, I definitely think it would be great to have a show where we can bring everybody together from absolutely crazy, amazing, diverse backgrounds. And, and what, that, what does that look like for me as an artist? Because artists are always constantly like, around everyone who, and we see all the differences and sometimes we're the ones pushing people to think that way. And so I was like, let me bring in that type of um, energy to this exhibition. So the title was Unraveled, Restructured and Revealed. And I was thinking of like, we need, we need to do some unraveling to talk, to talk about how to fix things. We need to restructure them and then we reveal them. And so that's the exhibition component of, oh wait, well, who are the artists um, that I know that I've seen that I maybe don't know that are just out there that are doing these things and how do we put them all together. So what would you say is the most significant aspect of the show that you're that you know you're just trying to develop right now now that you've got 61 artists <laughs> yeah. how how are how is this going to develop? I think the most impactful um, things I, I, I the, the subtitle was also where contemporary art and diverse perspectives intersect. So this idea of contemporary art and the history of uh, who is who has benefited from it and who hasn't, and I think I'm um, thinking about all these artists who are not necessarily on everybody's lips or not everybody in everybody's sight, but they should be, and now they will be, and they should be considered and appreciated for their um, perspective, be it academic or non-academic, be it self-taught or highly trained, uh, in grad school, in school, no school. So it's a bridge of everyone who literally does not fit this one type of mode and they exist and they make art and they always have and they always will regardless to who's in charge of the art world. <laughs> so. Yeah and so how did you come up with who was going to be on your list? What I did was I I didn't want to rely on my biases right. I think the thing about curating is it's inherently going to be based off of people you like and work that you like and so I was like okay I know what I like, I know who I know, but I don't know who I don't know. So I actually called on people to send me lists. So shout out to Feather and Shiverini, shout out to another one of my good friends, um, Jody, who also Sandy Robinson. These are, she's um, a former collector of mine. And so I'm like, and I, specifically with Sandy, she has artists in her repertoire that are artists that I have not met. So I, I, I just chose people around me that I knew, knew people that I didn't know. And also, Instagram, Facebook, social media, just constantly being on these sites, you see a lot of people that, and I'm like, okay, let me just shoot my shot, see if they'll be a part of the show. So it's been fun. It's been really fun to just kind of look and then select based on who fits the description. And then when the overwhelming response was absolutely, this is incredible, thank you. Um, so that was um, humbling in itself. Just because you say, can you be in the show don't mean people are gonna say yes. Uh, especially right now, and I'm very uh, mindful of what's happening in the world and what's really going on. And so um, I understand, like, hey, this is a really tough time. But in the tough time, let's celebrate. 
That's for sure. Yeah, no, we're really excited about the show too. Um, I know that you and um, our curator and have been meeting with all the artists that have uh, said yes to the show. Um, give me just a couple of your favorites, things that really stood out that you were like, wow, that's going to be cool. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just speak maybe examples of the work I've seen. So um, the cool thing is people are either showing something that they already have and they're from the studio. And a lot of people are like, I'm going to make something spanking new. And so that's been, it's exciting. And I actually thought it would be beneficial to let the artists drive what they would like to show. Usually in being an artist, people would pick what they want from you. And then you're like, but I really like this thing over here. And they're like, yeah, but I like this thing over here. So we really thought it would be awesome to let the artists drive what they're excited about. So a lot of, some of the artists are totally directly dealing with what's going on with COVID. Um, and some are indirectly dealing with it. So I thought it was a great, like, thing to see all the different ways artists are responding to what's happening in the world today. What um, types of mediums uh, will we expect to see in the show? Oh, yeah. I think one of the best parts about these studio visits is, I mean, it's, it's a, I, the other part of diversity for me is artwork. Like what does diverse art look like? So I'm talking uh, traditional printmaking to drawings, to um, installations, hand sewn and hand screen printed, video, photography, uh, sculpture, you know, so, so we have ceramics, we have um, cyanotypes, we have some really old, like old school ways of working with photography thrown in there. We have artists from Zimbabwe, from Ghana, uh, local artists, regional, it's in, um, and, and so I think that's the exciting part about it is because, because of the people are diverse, it's like their practices are just inherently also diverse with the, with the medium. So we have traditional painting, large scale, small. It's like, you're going to get everything in this show. You no, know, it does sound really exciting. I'm excited to see all the different, um, the pieces that you guys have been talking about. Um, yeah. How are we going to, how's the show going to be launched? How's it going to be exciting, even though we're at the end of the pandemic? Well, here's the deal. Uh, Zoom isn't going anywhere. So, and I'm someone who has embraced uh, Zoom and being online. And, um, and, and also, like, I think that since the pandemic, like, on, like social media has been like popping in a way that it hasn't been before because we have no other outlet actually. So we can't see each other. So let's, let's like, let's be here in a moment. The other thing is we're going to be doing pre-recorded artist talks where all the artists are going to get together and talk about things in the work. And then that'll be put out there for, um, in the like visual archive. What I'm understanding then is you're going to divide the artists kind of into smaller groups rather than doing 60 people. Yes. On one <laughs> And yeah. then you'll, and then they'll be based on like what they're like grouping them together, kind of like people who have the same interest and in subject matter. Correct. Or is that what it is? Yes, we met with a, a lot of artists and actually gave. I say, can you guys give me each artist gave me three words to sum up their work, and I mean, you know, answer notes, and I was like, okay, so several artists so far have said humor, so. That's right. a great way to put them in a group and talk about humor and art. How do you successfully have humor and art? Especially when you're talking about really serious things. What does that look like? Um, then we have a lot of, of course, personal narrative art. We have uh, some tapestry uh, artists, some fiber artists. And so a lot of those artists talk, talked about legacy. So I'm like, ooh, legacy and, and you know, interwoven legacy. You know, just thinking about what does that look like and how do you how do you make a legacy as an artist? What does that what does that mean? So that that's the exciting part is that. You don't, you never know what people have in common until you sit and talk with them. And you're like, wow. And then I have something in common as an artist with every artist in there. So, um, so I thought that was incredible. Yeah, no, I think that's going to be really, really exciting. I'm, I'm really excited to be able to see the work and the people talk online. I know you've done this, these types of Zoom yeah. um, group uh, discussions in the past, and I, I was really uh, impressed with them. So I can't wait to see what happens <laughs> with this particular um, uh, version and, and just all having a series of these um, discussions. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a way for people to participate in the discussions um, beyond listening? Yeah, thank you so much for bringing that up. Absolutely. So actually, before we even before I even start um, organizing fully the uh, pre-recorded Zoom discussions, I will be um, putting a shout out to the community on the um, Instagram page for TMA, asking the community, what questions do you have to ask in general about art, contemporary art? What does it look like today? 
Um, what are your concerns about inclusion in the art world? And then we would actually use those questions from the community to drive the conversation. So, um, so that everyone's involved and everyone is being heard. And it's not just this hierarchy of who like this, oh, they, they're important. So they're gonna just talk about what they wanna talk about. I'm like, we're all in this together and we should, we need to talk about these things together. What do you want audiences to take away from the show? You know, if, I think what's exciting is that this exhibition is in Appleton, Wisconsin. And a lot of the artists who are from the East Coast, from everywhere, are like, wait, where's Wisconsin number one? Where's, where's Appleton, Wisconsin number two? And then they see the museum and they're like, this is a beautiful museum in the middle of a place I'd never been to. And I think what I want is this beautiful, this kind of way of exposure for the audience who is going to, who lives in Wisconsin, who lives in Appleton, who's like, do I have to go all the way to New York to see this kind of art? No, you don't. It's right here because everybody is everywhere. And artists live in, I, I live in multiple cities at once. And so that's very normal. And so I kind of want the audience to go, wow, I don't have to like leave to go see this type of like woke art and like contemporary art and art that is happening now with really loud statements about inclusion and um, issues of, of, of being you know pushed to the side or whatever. And the work is about a lot of things. And so I want the audience to take, to be excited about what they see and also see mediums that they never thought of as art. You know, you hear that a lot, like, why is that art? I, I want people to come out of this museum, like, what did I just see? I don't know what I just saw, but I love it and I'm excited and I'm invigorated and I never thought about art this way. Yeah, no, then that's obviously our goal too. We want the same thing. We are, we want everyone to be like, hey, you don't have to go to New York to see awesome art. art. We, we have a contemporary art museum right here that shows all sorts of interesting work from people from Wisconsin and all over the United States. And so, you know, we're right, right, right there with you. And, and also believe that, you know, the videos are a great way to be able to communicate and to be able to get the voice of a variety of people without them necessarily having to travel. And it, it really has opened up, uh, the kicked open the door, especially for smaller museums like yeah. us, to be able to say, this is a normal way to do things. A couple, a couple other things I wanted to point out about the show, a couple other gems. We have some um, two generational families in the show. So we have uh, Frida High, who's both her sons are going to be in the show. And then we have Sabrina Nelson, who her son's going to be in the show. And we have artists ranging from their 70s. So, you know, from their early 20s to their 70s. So I want to talk about that also type of diversity and voice of why you have different generations literally throughout this exhibition too. Oh, that's awesome. Very exciting. So we're very, very grateful to you um, for participating and help us build this amazing show that we're all going to be super proud of. And um, I cannot wait to see it all launch in February. Um, is there anything else you'd like to mention to anyone? I just want to say thank you for trusting an artist <laughs> to come in. Like historically, it's unheard of. So thank you for trusting me to um, to put my vision towards and, and being very open to that. Well, you're welcome. And we we spent time in our um, exhibition meetings talking about what how we should handle this. And one of the things that we had decided is that we felt like um, right now the artists are sort of ground zero for everything that's happening within these different movements that are coming together, social justice, identity politics, um, what's going on with the coronavirus. And artists know artists and they know who is doing the most interesting work right now. We wanted to have an artist that could really go out there and find the most interesting artists right now, quickly through yeah. their network of friends and et cetera. And so that's why um, when Anne and I saw your, um, uh, you had done the, the sort of group Zoom about curation and what's been happening since all the social justice um, sort of um, uh, protests that happened over the summer and you had a bunch of curators talking and and we were just like we're in we like her oh thank you and then and then for those who are looking at the website by the way all the uh, everything will be on the website too so everyone like the videos the there's there's always going to be a, a landing for people to go and see things that we are doing for the show but if you notice on the website there's you look at the list of names you're going to see a couple of names that are not capital i think that's interesting i'm going to say that to when we do our zoom talks and you'll be like why is matt lambert's name not capital and everybody else's is 
well. <laughs> so it's always good, it's good to excited to respect artists and what they want to be printed and how they want to be printed. So that's been fun too. Yeah, that's great. All right, well, we're looking forward to it. I can't wait to see what happens over the next month. Again, Trout Museum of Art. We're starting our new show. Tiana, you want to say it again? What are we? What's the name of the show? And what's the movie? Um, unraveled, restructured, revealed, where contemporary art and diverse perspectives intersect. Right. So we'll see you all in February. Oh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me, and I am so excited to see what happens next. Awesome. Thank you. Stay tuned, everyone. <laughs>